Hi, this is Don Barnhart. Uh, today I'm going to make a video on how to get started with Optica. Uh, to, for my assumptions today, I'm going to assume that you know nothing. I'm going to assume that you've never used Mathematica before, and of course you've never used Optica before either. In order to get started, the first thing we're going to do is start up Mathematica. This is, this is done quite simply by starting it, just like any other program. Okay, the next thing, now that we've got Mathematica here, is that we're going to start Optica. Now, Optica runs inside the Mathica, Mathematica environment and uses all the features and capabilities of Mathematica seamlessly. Essentially, it just becomes a part of the Mathematica war environment that you're going to use. And in fact, most of the time, you will not be aware that you're using Mathematica so much as you're working with Optica. To make Optica really easy to use, I have developed a GUI interface with pull-down menus to help you to develop and design things without having to have any knowledge of how Optica works or how Mathematica is working. You can start with without reading any books or any textbooks and here's the way you do it. You first uh, select this GUI and you say yes I want to start a new session. <coughs> Now here, Optica is loading up inside of Mathematica, and this is running a script that has to run every time, but you can just relax, you don't have to do anything. And we're just gonna wait for the real-time GUI interface to become available for us to use. Okay, so here we have our, our user interface that has, the beauty of this is it has pull down menus that lets you select optical components without having to remember anything about how to use Optica or Mathematica. So for today's example, we're gonna do something pretty simple. We're just going to set up a lens and focus it onto a screen. Uh, so I'm going to select a wedge of rays lens. And notice when I did that, we have a, a, a menu opens up with lots of options. Many, many options. Now, please do not get overwhelmed when you see this because in general, all these things you can leave alone and not worry about. There's only one thing that you really do want to consider and that is how um, is your the, the angle of the light source. In this case I want to use 30 degrees. So I'm going to put that here. Uh, I lied. There's one other thing we want to think about and that is the number of rays that are generated. In this case three rays are going to be generated automatically but I want to change that to 11. Now I'm done with this and I'm going to add it onto a list. And this is this basically lists the different optical components that are going to be present in the system. And for today's example, I'm going to keep this really simple uh, so that we can focus on how to use Optica rather than how to, des how to design a complicated system. So in this case, we have a plano convex lens, and it already suggests that we use a focal length of 100 millimeters and an aperture of 50 millimeters. And I'm happy with that. I'm just going to keep that suggestion, and we're going to add it to the system. Finally, uh, I'm just going to put in a, a boundary. And this boundary basically defines uh, the size of our optical table. 
So if you had an optical table that you're setting up components on, for example, this would be the size of it. And in fact, this is a three-dimensional volume that's, um, so it has a length of 200 millimeters in this case. We're going to add that to our system. <clears throat> At this point, <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about the placement of these objects. I'm going to allow them to float. Essentially, these objects have no definition of where they're going to be resting on the table because we can do that in, an, in another step later on. So now we, that we've finished defining our objects, we're going to export that um, into um, Optica's uh, working environment. And here, so this is... Uh, this is our this is the Optica code that's been generated from our from our GUI interface. And now in order to use this code, all we have to do is evaluate it by doing shift return. Okay, so here is our, here's our function, or our, our model, and you can see we have a light source. We ha the boundary is this rectangle, this big rectangle we see here. We have our lens, and we have a light source. What you may not realize at first is that you can move these things around. You can go, you can take this, and you can, you can actually put it anywhere you want. You can rotate the lens, free rotation, really do anything you want with it. <clears throat> Same goes with the light source. You can take this guy, you can point it up at the sky, you can point it down to the ground, anything you want. In this case, what I really want to do is I want to collimate the lens. At least I want to get a rough collimation. At this point, we don't have any optimization built in. Uh, we only have the ability to sort of place things in a fairly uh, coarse way. We don't have that much control. But since we messed around so much, I think we might want to actually put these lenses and these objects more accurately. And that's where we can go up to the top of the screen here and something called controls. And this gives us control over all the things that I was doing by grabbing a hold of the object. You can do that here. You can, you can move your object back and forth with sliders. So here you go. We can move this, we can move it back and forth. Um, <clears throat> And that's going to be useful for now, because what I want to do is put the objects back where we started. But there's an easier way even still. <clears throat> Since I want to go back to where we started, I go to the corner of, the, of this window, and I, go init I select Initial Settings, and bam, the objects are back where we started. So at this point, well, all I really want to do is kind of get that lens a little bit further away from the light source. Um, what I can use my slider to do that. So you see this? But at this point, the uh, range of the slider goes to 20. And that's not far enough. I want to go further than 20. So I'm going to make this, let's make this 120 instead. Now we can move this, the lens out to 100, 120, or 100 degrees, and not degrees, 100 millimeters. And uh, there's one other thing. I don't like the orientation of this lens. Um, I want to turn it around, flip it 180 degrees. 
And so I can just go up to the slider and I can rotate that lens around. And now we got a 120, uh, we've got a, we flipped it around 180 degrees. Um, the reason for this is because I know the aberrations are better when it's, when it's turned around. And as an optical engineer, you probably know that as well, whoever's listening to this video. Okay, so now we've got a nominally collimated beam that's hitting the side of this wall, and we've got our lens. What next, you might ask? Well, what if you want to, you can do a lot <clears throat> beyond this. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Generate Optica Code button here. And this creates yet another uh, set of uh, windows that's getting progressively more complicated. So you noticed we started with the simple with our user interface back here, and then we created a simple render, a simple model of, of our design. In this case, we were able to get the objects more into position, into a position that we want them to be by moving them around, but not much more than that. We're not doing optimization here. We're just positioning things. Finally, we go up and we create, we hit the, we have hit, just to review, we hit the generate Optica code button. And this time, we've created a much more detailed uh, environment to use this function. Now what's happened is, suddenly we've got our light source wedge of rays has been assigned to a variable. Um, the plain old convex lens is assigned to a different variable and our uh, boundary has another variable name given to it because that's how Mathematica and Optica like to work. They, everything is represented symbolically or, or as objects, as variables. Now you can work with these variables just like a language if you want. So we're getting progressively deeper into the way Optica and Mathematica works. And now we can evaluate these, these definitions. These are all definitions for the system. And <clears throat> we can then go to either a basic, we have some choices now, and they're labeled. So we can either do a basic model of the system, which is here, but this model is much more encompassing than the one we previously did because the previous model here, if you'll notice, it has only one view. It's the top view and nothing else. The, on this model, we actually have ability to look at different views and they're all built in here, but there's no optimization yet. No yet optimization as, uh, So we're going to go instead, we're going we're gonna to optimize ray tilt. We're going to scroll down here. We're going to go to ray tilt. This is a, these are all choices to optimize, but this is the only one I want to do is ray tilt. And in fact, I want to take these other ones and basically discard them because I'm not going to use them. So essentially what we've done is we've created a template. Optica gives you a template of the possibilities which you're not required to do. And in this case, since I'm only concerned with ray tilt, I'm going to get rid of the other ones. Now I'm going to evaluate ray tilt, uh, this, uh, this optimization of ray tilt, and you'll see in a minute, this will allow us to get a very, as accurate as possible, uh, collimated system, system of collimation. Okay, so now we've created a, a GUI interface that we, for our specific optical system, and now you can see, you can this also includes a three-dimensional model of the system, which we didn't have originally and a top view of the system, which is what we did have. And finally, we have the ability to optimize. 
But we, in this case, we only we we have all these parameters that we could be optimizing, but only one of them is actually useful. And that one, <clears throat> well, there's two possible useful ones, I guess. One could move the light source closer to the lens, or you could move the lens further and closer to the light source, which is what I think I'll do. I'm going to leave the light source alone. I'm not going to move it. If I did move the light source, notice when I move my cursor across, it tells me the, va the variables that are available to be optimized. X1, XX1 here would be the variable I would choose. But since I'm doing the lens instead, I'm going to choose XX2 to, to optimize. So I go to my optimization tab, I select XX2, and I hit optimize, the, push the optimize button. And sometimes if I'm not quite sure, I might click it a few times to make sure it really did it. But there we have it. It has optimized that lens position as much as it can. But you know what? It didn't change it very much, did it? I just want to prove to myself that it actually did do something. So I'm going to, this time, I'm going to move the light source uh, away from optimization a little ways. I'm going to move it inwards. I just uh, increased the range here so I can move it in further. And I'm going to do the reverse optimization. I'm going to optimize on the light source instead of optimizing on the lens position. So we go back here, we click on light source optimization, and I hit optimize. And there it is. <laughs> it looks like it didn't do anything because it's already back to where it was. So this is how you do, you set up a simple system using the uh, an interface to do that. Uh, and then you create a, a gradually more complex op model, optical model, that includes an optimization in Optica. And it, with this, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say goodbye for until our next video.